We have Dr. Sidney Hewlett here. He's one of only three interventional pulmonologists in the state of Arkansas, and he joins us here to explain interventional pulmonology and how it can benefit patients. So good morning, good to see you, and welcome to Good Morning Arkansas. Thank you. First time I think that we've met. Likewise. All right, so from St. Vincent, Catholic Health Initiative St. Vincent, and what does an interventional pulmonologist do? An interventional pulmonologist is a lung doctor who does a special group of procedures that uh, deals with the diagnosing, the staging, which is the, assessing the extent of spread of a lung cancer and the complications of lung cancer. And you have to go, I'm, I'm assuming that you have to go through quite a bit of training for something like that. You do a, a three-year internal medicine residency, you do three years of, of, of pulmonary and critical care fellowship, and then you do an additional year of interventional pulmonology training, so seven years. Seven years. Is that why there's only one of three? <laughs> well, well, because I, you know, med school's got to be at least seven years for, for many. Four, four years, so it's four years. Tw twelve years total. But there's a there's very few training programs in the in the nation. It's a fairly new field. Um, unfortunately, UAMS has one. I was I did my uh, internal medicine in, in NYU, and then I did my fellowship at UNC, and then came back. I'm from Jonesboro, and came back to UAMS to train in interventional pulmonology. Well, that's wonderful that yeah. we have great doctors that yeah. do they train and come back and share yeah. their knowledge. And, and help everybody else. But what are, what are some of the procedures that somebody like you would perform? Uh, there's a lot of stuff I do, but the bulk of it um, uh, is doing something called endobronchial ultrasound and esophageal ultrasound. Um, it's a procedure where uh, it's essentially a rubber hose that goes into the mouth, down into the windpipe, and can see, see through the airway with uh, ultrasound in order to see lymph nodes that are situated outside the airway and the same thing from the esophagus they kind of sit beside each other um, and it's really important um, if those nodes if those lymph nodes that you can see uh, that you end up biopsying have cancer in them or not because it determines how far the lung, lung cancer is spread and that determines the best treatment so how do you do the diagnosis and then the staging of the suspected lung cancer? Can you do it right then and there on the spot with this? Yeah, it's, it's actually really nice. Traditionally, a lot of times what's happened is someone shows up to a primary care doctor with a cough or some other symptom and they get a CAT scan of their chest and they have a mass in their lung that looks like a lung cancer and they also have enlarged lymph nodes in the chest. So what would happen, say, 10 years ago is they would have a CAT scan guided biopsy of the mass and then um, you still need to know whether the lymph nodes are positive or negative in order to determine whether the person is eligible for surgery, so they would have to have a separate surgical procedure to go down and biopsy the lymph nodes. But what we can do now is when we see that CAT scan and we say, this looks like a lung cancer and you have enlarged lymph nodes in your chest, we do endobronchial ultrasound, biopsy the lymph node, and we diagnose and stage in the same setting in a minimally invasive way. Um, so it saves the person a uh, extra procedure, it saves surgery. And it saves time too, I'm sure. Yeah, it does. Um, and it really identifies uh, who should have surgery and not have surgery. People that are eligible for surgery have much higher cure rates than those people that get chemotherapy and radiation in the more advanced lung cancers. Um, so there's a, sometimes people use CAT scans and PET scans in order to say if a lymph node has cancer in it or not, um, which is a common practice, but you can't tell that from both of those, either one of those scans or both of combined you have to biopsy the lymph nodes because neither one of those are good enough to say that that node has cancer in it or doesn't have cancer that's some fascinating stuff now, the day of the procedure that you go in there how invasive is it what do patients expect it, it's an outpatient procedure we bring you the procedures done in the hospital in our bronchoscopy suite we put an IV in we give you some sedation medicine most pe most people don't remember uh, the procedure they cough some um, there is uh, very little pain um, and very very low risk for things like bleeding and collapsed lungs that uh, you see with other biopsies. Um, so it's a very it's a minimally invasive procedure. It usually takes about 15 minutes, and we actually have a pathology doctor in the room with us as we're taking biopsies. And about 90% of the time, they can tell us this. They look at the specimen that day and say it looks like cancer. It doesn't look like cancer. So the, the overwhelming majority of the time, we can give the patient an answer the first day, the day of the procedure, that this is what it looks like. That's some amazing stuff. How old is this technology? Uh, it was first introduced, um, it, it was introduced in research in Japan, but introduced to the United States in 2005, um, but it's becoming more uh, widespread um, now, uh, but still, a lot of things are still done the old way. All right. Well, thank you so much Thanks. for sharing your knowledge okay. and coming back home to Arkansas. Right. All right. And again, that's uh, Dr. Hewlett here at St. CHI St. Vincent. You can contact them for more information. And coming up next after the break...